So I have been given the task to give a talk on EGFR, altered non-small cell lung cancer in 20 minutes. So this is going to be a tour de force. I'm going to do my best. Um, but please um, understand that this is just very high level and there is just, I'm just scraping, you know, the surface here. There's much more to, to be learned and much more to be said about this topic. Here are my disclosures. So today I'm going to talk about the evolution of lung cancer treatment just briefly, talk about non-small cell lung cancer in the advanced stage setting, resistance alterations and mechanisms, early stage disease in the EGFR space, ASCO updates, because I'm sure you're all curious about, about those, although I'm sure you've heard uh, much about them already, and then I'm going to summarize everything with some take-home points. So as you can see, lung cancer first started off as just lung cancer. Then we understand that there's non-small cell and small cell. Then we understand that there's more histologic breakdown like squamous and non-small cell and large cell neuroendocrine. And then we move on to molecular pathology and we start to understand that there's more than just histologic breakdown. There's driver alterations and fusions that could be driving this lung cancer growth. So that's where my topic is going to be focused today, specifically on those that harbor EGFR alterations. So in 1999, we really didn't know all that much about lung cancer. 79% of alterations were unknown. Now fast forward to 2023, and this is what we are dealing with nowadays, plus more. So what do we do with this data tsunami? I'm going to try to make some sense of it in the EGFR space, um, but I have to be very honest with you. It is a it is a huge task and I rely on my colleagues. I rely on le learning from my patients and, and reading as much as I can every day, to be honest, because I certainly do not know it all. So let's talk about EGFR in the advanced stage or stage four setting. So as we all know, these are the drugs that are approved for EGFR stage four disease. Um, Osimertinib is the most common drug that I'm sure you've all heard about. This is the given frontline for patients with non-small cell lung cancer that harbor an EGFR alteration. These patients are typically about 10% of the patients with non-small cell lung cancer in the United States. Um, it's commonly seen in patients with no smoking or minimal smoking history, but I have seen patients with a smoking history that harbor EGFR alterations, so this is not an end-all be-all. Um, it is more commonly seen in the female population and typically those um, from East Asia, but that is also not an end-all be-all. Um, some of the more classical mutations are exon 19 deletions, L858R mutations, or exon 21. Those make up the majority. However, they're all, there are atypical EGFR mutations like G719X and L861Q, et cetera, as you can see here, as well as EGFR exon 20 insertions that you're going to be hearing about as well. So some of the key toxicities of these tyrosine kinase inhibitor drugs that we use to treat patients that harbor this alteration is really rash and diarrhea, but that is not the only side effect. Sometimes we see pneumonitis, we see paronychia or nail changes, um, and we can see thrombocytopenia or other cytopenias, meaning your certain lines of our blood count can go down. Most commonly, I see platelets. 